Hello all my JavaScript friends, this is the Virtuoid aka Mike Smith and this is the video which covers the actual coding for our game class in the Davenport card game. If you like this video, please click on the like button below, subscribe to this channel or leave a comment. I would love to hear from you. Okay, let's get started. Where did we leave off? Where well, we left off with three specifications for our game, our constructor, our initialization routine, and our start routine. And I figured this is really all that we need to have done. As I mentioned within the test part of the video, a lot of this stuff is going to be internal. When you actually play, a, when, when the computer is going to play a game here, everything we're playing that entire round is going to be internal to the game itself. The game is going to sit there and play the round and the round we've, we've already done all the specifications for the round. So that's all been taken care of. So there's no need to actually test again for anything that's occurring with the round. All we really need to be concerned with is as it's mentioned here in the start spec is that we should know, we should be able to start a round and play until it's all finished. And we should have information available to us with the game once it's finished. And we should be able to also stop the game in case a player happens to drop out. So this these are the specifications that we've had for, for the game. The initialization is the exact same thing in which we are going to be initializing a lot of information for the game. And so we got to test for all the different initialization uh, parameters there. And of course, finally the constructor, all the different arguments that we'll send to the constructor, we need to test for those. Everything else is meaningless. So the easiest thing to do here is let me throw all the code in here in the game, explain to you what I've done. As you'll see here, it's a lot of code, but in reality, it's very, very easy to understand. Yeah, 142 lines of code. So let's take a quick look at see what we've got here. I'm not worried about the imports, but the first thing here is, is that we're going to need to set values for all of our different cards. Now, the reason that we're having to do this is that when we construct a standard card and we're using the standard card class from the Virtuoid series. In fact, if you want to go to our videos uh, for our from the JavaScript videos for our standard card, we got a whole set of those and how we did the testing and how we did how we created the class and all of that. But the cards, although you can define the suit and the rank, it doesn't define the value. That's up to the application. So this is defining the and mapping that basically says, hey, an ace is worth a value of one, a two is worth a value of two, and so on and so forth, until a king is worth a value of 13. So what we got here? Well, first of all, we got the constructor. And the idea here is now we got to be able to write this code to be able to satisfy all the different specs within this constructor spec. spec. And so, whoops, let's go to the game. So basically we got to first of all make sure is our ID a string or not? If it's not a string, then we throw an error. If the player's instance is not an array, if it's, if it's not an array or if it is an array and not every single player is an instance of the player class, then we throw an exception there. And that takes care of all of our exceptions right down here. Throw exceptions if an ID is a string, if player's not an array or player's array is not, is not, is not containing all players. So that will solve that one. And so then before we got all the IDs here, all the game over, the errors, and the discard deck, which is going to contain the deck that we deal from, and also the deck that we're going to throw all the discards in. Okay, so within our constructor, we should be able to return the game itself, uh, default string ID. It should default to empty array for players, and it should return an ID if specified. So that should be fairly easy to check for. And all that is is just it's going to be just basically read onlys for the players, for the deck, for the errors, for the winners, for the game over, for the rounds, all of that's just going to give us the information here that we're going to need to be able to set, satisfy all of these particular uh, tests here. Now, what I could also do here is test to make sure that the players and the IDs and all that is read only. I didn't in this particular case. Uh, perhaps I should have. You want to be a little bit more, you know, solid with it. You sh I should be able to. I should have put throw that in there. But I think for right now, we're just going to let that go. Um, probably later on in another, in another update, I'll throw that information in there just to kind of really help tighten everything up. But I know for a fact here that I've, since I only have get, getters and setters, that everything is going to be read only. So there's really not a need to test for that. Okay, so that takes care of the constructor. How about the initialization? A lot of things going on in the initialization here. We got to throw exceptions if we don't pass a dealer. And we also got a third exception if the dealer is not the players, because this basically allows us to be able to set a certain player to be a dealer. Uh, we should be able to create a round of 52 cards, deal five cards to all the players, and throw exceptions uh, if the callback arguments that we pass are not a, value, a key value collection. And what are the callback arguments? Those are things that we pass to the rounds. And the rounds, they're basically hooks that every time a round takes a certain 
a, a certain action, it's do, going to do a callback. And that's going to allow us in the real world to be able to, to, to perform things like to perform, perform the animations, redraws of the screens, and things like that. Once we get to the actual code in the game, that will come in really, really handy. So let's take a look at our initialization within the game. Uh, looks like a lot here, but there's really not a whole lot. Here's our exceptions where we check to make sure that the dealer is indeed a player, that the dealer is indeed part of the player's uh, uh, array, and that we check to make sure that everything that we have within our callbacks is a particular function if there is something there. By default, our callbacks is a blank object. So this is basically a key, ob a, a key object dictionary pair. Okay, so... This is where we build our cards, and this we're basically going through a, we're going through each of the standard card suits and each of the standard card ranks, and then we this is where we use that value map that we created up here to be able to get the value for each of the cards. So that oh, where is it? There, there it is. So when we create the card, I ah, lost it again. So we create a card. We can create a new standard card with the suit, the rank, and the get uh, the, the value map to get that particular value. So once all of that is done, we're going to save that to the deck itself, which is right here. And then we do a deck.shuffle. And that should take care of, we should be able to create a new deck of 52 cards. That will take care of that particular uh, test there. So uh, next thing we want to do here is we're going to shuffle the cards. And we're just using the shuffle uh, method that is part of the standard card deck. And then we're here is where we actually deal out the cards. Basically, we start with the, you know, we, we, we've got a routine here called, a, a private routine called get next player deal. And uh, we figure out what the next player is, and then we just deal out that card. And uh, let's see, yep, cards per player. This cards per player is a private variable saying how many cards per player. It's going to be five cards per player. That should be a default up here. And it sure enough is. There it is, line 26. That's a default. Get back down to the code here. So this should automatically deal out the cards and that should give us the ability to, or that should basically figure out that we should uh, basically deal the five, all five cards of players. Ah, let's try that again. It should be able to solve or, or should be able to satisfy the test here that we should deal the five cards to all the players. So that should be able to fix up all of our initializations. And then finally, we got the start routine and that's it. That's all there is to the start. So all it does here is just it continues on forever and ever and ever until we know the game is over or until some sort of error has occurred. And all of that gets passed back from the round itself. So when we do the round, we're going to save the round for purposes later on. It doesn't really matter, but we save the round. We play the round itself. Once we, once we construct the round, we play the round. And once the round is over, we get the game over and the error and if there is any winner. So this sets the game over the error and the winner, which is the things that we're going to need to text, test for to be able to solve here on these, these very large uh, tests here to be able to solve for, first of all, if there is a, uh, an actual winner and if there is an actual error. So from the round itself, which we've already tested, we're going to get the game over, the error, and the winner. And that's going to satisfy a game over, error, and winner that we now test for the start spec. And that's pretty much it. But I want to just kind of show one thing before we run the test, make sure it works, which it's going to work because I just copied the code over. But anyway, the idea here is notice that I did not do any testing for the play round, and I didn't do any testing for the get next player deal. Now, why did I not do that? Well, this is the public routine. This is the routine or the method that is publicly available that the application will run, just like with initialize here, to be able to start the game itself. So once the game is started, it's just going to continue on until there is a winner. Now, from that application's point of view, all it really cares about is saying, hey, start the game. And game, let me know when we have the game is over and when there is a winner. And when that happens, it's going to return from this start routine. And since it's an async, it's going to return a resolved promise once it is finished up. By default, an async method will return a, a pending promise. This particular one will return a resolved promise once it finishes off. Once it finishes up, we know that the game is over and we know that the error is, uh, that, the, that there has been an act, that either, either the game is over or that there has been an error. And if there has not been an error when the game is over, we know that there's going to be some sort of winner. All of that information is done down here. 
So the reason that we don't have to test for play round or get next player for deal is that get next player for deal, for example, is already up inside here. If it did not work, then the initial, initialize will fail. Just like if play round did not work, then start will fail. So if we test for initialize and we test for start, we don't have to test for the other two because both of those would fail. If they succeeded, then we know for a fact that play round and get next player position, get next player for deal have also succeeded. And so that's the reason we didn't test for those. So all we had to test for was initialize and all we had to test for was start. And that was it. So you want to see if it works? Let's bring it up and let's see if it will work. That'll be npm run test e2e, e2e2, excuse me, e2e ci. And I'll see you on the other side. Okay, we're all done here and all of our specs have now passed. This is the first time we've ran this, all these specifications and they've actually passed. So our, our constructor pass was seven. Our, our, our test, our six tests for initialized pass and our start for a two small little tests, which are very complicated, have now finished too. So that completes our testing for the game. In reality, that's it. The next thing to do is to start on the actual browser game itself, and that will be the next video. If you like this video, please click on the like button below, subscribe to this channel, or leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. And that will finish it up for all of our tests and all of our core code for the game. The next video is the actual game itself. I cannot wait. Thank you so very much for watching. This is the Virtuoid, AKA Mike Smith. We'll see you later.